So I was asked a pretty unique question the other day from a friend of mine. And he said to me, Daniel, if you were to travel back in time and uh, go back and coach yourself from the start, what kind of advice would you give yourself if you were going to be doing day game or uh, or daytime cold approaching, whatever you want to call it, all over again? So I, I was having a thing and I've written, um, I've written my points down of uh, what I would uh, say and I thought I'd actually share them with you. So if you are then someone who maybe you are just starting out or maybe you've been uh, doing uh, approaching for a while or maybe actually even better you've had a break from it and uh, you're now looking to uh, to get back into the habit especially with it being the new year of talking to strangers or maybe you know getting yourself a girlfriend or whatever then uh, you know what what would you do uh, or what would I advise for you to do to um, turn things around so uh, I think the first one uh, I'm going to share is uh I w- I'd, I'd probably end up like practicing talking to strangers every week and I wouldn't consider it just necessarily being to do with a uh, day game or doing cold approaching. I think one of the things that certainly made it harder when I had first started was that I wasn't really socialising. I wasn't really doing anything that got that momentum going with getting used to talking to people or even just getting into the flow of having a conversation. So it made it then even more challenging when I was starting off because I just genuinely didn't know what to say, let alone even know what to ask. Um, I was like going into every conversation like a blank canvas and going like, uh, I don't know what to ask here. What, what, what do I talk about? You know, I didn't really have much life experience or anything like that. But I think if I were to be starting all over again or, or, or time traveling back, um, I would be saying to myself like, right, just make sure on a regular basis you are doing something that one gives you the ability to actually practice talking to people and two you are also gaining experiences that actually give you topics to talk about in conversations which will certainly make it easier to demonstrate attraction um, and also just find commonalities or common grounds with people to you know find things that you have in common which is where I think it's even easier to have most conversations. Um, But being able to, I don't know, find like a hobby or, you know, do some training in something. Uh, So like for me, I mean, I've always enjoyed extreme sports. So I would end up, um, uh, if I were to go back, I'd be saying, right, well, you know, every week stick to doing an extreme sport or if not every week, just try and, go maybe once every fortnight or how many times a month can you go and do these things um i even remember i used to take karate uh years ago when i was very young and even the confidence that i developed from that from being able to talk to other people who also had an interest in karate um and uh even just the friendships and stuff that i'd made from that at the time um you know it can really just help you overall with um being able to talk to people and certainly if you're taking classes or you're doing stuff that is just um well, it just has everyone in it, both men and women. It's not just men there. You are actually mixing with everyone else too. So I think, yeah, that would probably be point number one that I would be encouraging people to do. Like just make sure that you are doing stuff every week that encourages you to constantly um, uh, talk to strangers. Um, So maybe even then, if it's not going to be doing like a hobby or anything, then yeah, why not make sure that you are scheduling time aside to uh, go out and practice talking to people and whether that's just uh, giving compliments, asking for directions or actually, you know, saying to someone like, I really like this about you. I'd, I'd love to know a bit more about it. Then absolutely that is okay too. Um, so my second one, uh, point that I, uh, I put down here, um, uh, if I'd go back in time, I'd probably also make sure that I would put smaller of windows of time aside to actually practice doing uh, day game or, uh, or cold approaching, but just make sure that the time that I'm doing is a lot shorter, but I am being consistent with it. So I think certainly stuff that I experience and what I have seen over the years is where, you know, guys, 
um, they do like a boot camp or they do like a week long training and you know they get some great experiences out of it and I remember you know I've had great experiences but I think though when you are doing too much in a period of time and you're not then being consistent with it afterwards you just kind of go back to the routine that you had before and I know that happened I think several times for me where I would kind of like throw myself in the deep end I'd maybe like put a week aside, go absolutely crazy, 10, 12 hour days going out to practice. And yes, I was like warmed up and stuff. But then I found after that, I just wouldn't have that same kind of experience maybe for like a couple of months. And then I think the momentum was like slowly dying out or it was slowly going down and I just then wasn't really doing anything at all. And it was very easy to just focus on, you know, doing work or going to the gym or just going shopping and stuff and then not really incorporating the approaching into my normal everyday life. Whereas what I have uh, experienced, uh, which has been better, is then just only doing like a couple of hours a week um, you know, putting some time aside, almost treating it like a like a gym experience where, you know, if I've got the op- if I've got the time to go to the gym for like an hour uh, a day, then I would be like, OK, well, you know what? Let me do either like three, four hours a week of uh, approaching, you know, maybe like an hour a day and spread it out a couple of times. Or if I can't do that, then maybe just two hours uh, a week as a single session going out, doing it. And although, you know, it was a smaller amount of time, that consistency of going out every week, it was just ingrained into my routine. And that was when I was starting to get a lot more confident. And, you know, let's, you know, excluding, you know, getting results here, because, you know, if you're if you're only going out for two hours a week, then it's it's a lottery anyway on, you know, you could have a really good, fantastic two hours or you just might not get anything in two hours. Um but at least just being consistent, at least just going out and practicing. And again, we're talking about beginners here. Um, I I think it's just a really good, um, it's it's the key to anyone's success because then when you, let's say months have gone by and you have only had the opportunity to go out and do a couple of hours a week, if you then decided to throw yourself in the deep and go like, you know what, I want to pick the pace up, I'm putting a week aside, you will get some fantastic results with that and being able to then go back to just doing a couple of hours a week. You will see far better results than people who just throw themselves into doing like a a weekend or a week long thing and then don't incorporate it into their routine. Don't go uh, adding it into their, um, their, their weekly activities. So the third piece of advice that I would end up giving myself would be to just focus on getting comfortable with the experience of doing day game or cold approaching, but be open to taking more chances and risks if they come up. So what do I mean by this? Well, I remember when I first started, I was already thinking like 10 steps ahead. I was already thinking about like, how am I going to get a phone number? Is the girl going to become my girlfriend? And, you know, all this crazy malarkey rather than just focusing on a how do I stop the goal? What compliment can I give her once I've stopped her? What am I going to talk about with her when I stop her? And by, I think, just focusing on that first and not worrying about all these future things that haven't even happened yet or where you're even nowhere close to experiencing, it does alleviate, I think, just a lot of pressure with, uh, uh, with what I think a lot of men put on themselves, you know, Why think about stuff that you might be months and months away from, especially if you are new to talking to strangers in environments that you're just not going to be used to or what just really, again, isn't considered as the social norm, then just focus on the incremental steps. And by doing that, you know, as weeks or even months go by, then, you know, then you'll be in um, experiences or you'll be having experiences that will most likely see those things happen. You know, if you can then get comfortable giving someone a compliment and having a conversation and being able to demonstrate um, your attractive traits to the women that you're speaking to, then getting a phone number really is not a big deal. And when you even overcome that hurdle, you realize, 
oh, it's nothing. What was I afraid of? Why was I worrying about asking for a phone number? Or, oh, what was I worrying about with texting her to go on a date? What was I worrying about with actually going on a date with someone? Or what was I even worrying about to ask her to be my girlfriend? So, you know, all these things, as you get more comfortable with each phase, um, it will be a lot less scary and you just won't really be worrying about it at all. But with the second part of this, we're saying about, you know, taking more chances and risks, you that with we're still focusing on just the incremental steps. You don't want to just overwrite the possibility of like, well, I if I'm if I'm trying to just learn how to have a conversation with someone, that doesn't mean that you should not ask her for her phone number. You always want to be at least trying to dip your toe in the next step up and eventually you know following with the metaphor of this you'll then be able to put more toes on that next step until you get your whole foot on there and then next you will actually be taking that next step so just bear that in mind that you know it's good to just focus on the um the the first struggle that you're that you've got or that you're dealing with but also at least try and deal with the next struggle that's just one above that and eventually you'll be constantly pushing that comfort zone until that next step is now the norm and then the next one and so on so piece of advice number four that i would most certainly give myself would be to make sure that you make a great first impression with people by dressing as best as you possibly can but do also also consider comfort as well so I remember again when I first started like I just didn't really have any dress sense at all I had no fashion sense whatsoever um, and I was just wearing like really baggy clothes t-shirts that just didn't fit me and or jeans even as well and I'd always be wearing like trainers and stuff and you know imagine you're you're stopping people and you're just really not giving off this like cool suave vibe and that's through just you know the looks fashion wise so it's important to try and dress as best as you possibly can but in regards to don't forget about comfort if you're going to be walking around a lot you have to make sure that you are wearing comfortable shoes because i've also experienced from wearing very smart shoes for like eight hours straight walking around on the street you get blisters and you are going to be limping and also your knees and legs are going to buckle from the exhaustion of not wearing shoes that were built for comfort. So consider certainly outfit wise, try and dress as well as you possibly can. And as for your feet or as for shoes, try and wear something that looks as smart as possible. Um, Even maybe even considering actually buying shoes that have that mixture of the comfort but very smart and professional look because there are places out there that kind of do this like smart casual wear shoe um can make all of the difference with being able to still make a great first impression but not kill yourself in the whole process of uh, of practicing talking to people and the last thing that i would certainly probably advise myself would be to always aim to just end a practice session on a high um i remember in uh i remember i used to have sessions where i'd I'd just overdo it and i would almost force myself into burnout from you know just trying to get as many approaches in as possible because there used to be this ideology of well not even ideology but there used to be this sort of statement of like you know if you if you break through uh being persistent in doing approaches you know you'll develop your confidence better But I think from like training that I then would do in the gym, especially when I worked with personal trainers, that that's not always the case. You don't need to lift weights and burn yourself out and, you know, and and injure yourself to a point that you just can't do anything for weeks. As long as you are doing uh, enough on your body or as long as you are doing enough interactions, once you've had a fantastic interaction why not leave on a high? You know, if you booked a two hour session to go out and practice and you got really good results and, you know, maybe you got to that hour and a half point where you had enough time to warm up, you had a good couple of interactions and then you had a great last interaction, end it there. Why push it? Why risk losing this great mood that you've got? Why not let your body sit in comfort with this new level of flow state that you've picked up? And enjoy it 
it's an experience that most men or just most people in general don't really get. And here you are breaking comfort zones by talking to strangers on the street. And then you've had an, an amazing experience. Maybe you've met a girl who has actually almost like swept you off your feet. Then end it. End the session. Be like, you know what? What a great day. You know what? I'm going to end it there. I'm going to head home, relax and just do whatever. That's absolutely fine. There's no need to overdo it because what happens sometimes and certainly I think every dating coach or any guy will tell you is that you will then meet someone who's just having a really bad day. They're in a bad mood and suddenly that 100% level that you were at or energy wise will just drop straight down to like 5% and you'll be miserable <laughs> after that and you'll uh, you'll you'll kind of lose that great mood that you had. So why not owe it to yourself if you certainly achieve uh, a really, really good interaction, just end it there. And I know I think uh, over the years, I've had so many great ones as well. And I have like carried on doing approaching afterwards. And then I've, I, I think, yeah, I think I would have preferred to have just not done that, not wore myself out and just ended it there and just enjoyed it. So just recapping um, the, the five points, uh, if I were to travel again back in time or what advice would I give to a beginner who was, uh, doing day game from scratch, or again, even someone who's had a break and they're coming back into it. Number one, I would, uh, certainly practice talking to strangers every week without necessarily it having to be to do with cold approaching. Number two, I would put aside smaller windows of time to practice daytime cold approach rather than, you know, just trying to do loads and loads of hours into it, unless I'm kind of having more, maybe like a sabbatical experience with it. But uh, I think if I want to ingrain something into a routine, it's better just to do smaller sessions, but guarantee you are doing them on a weekly basis. Uh, piece of advice number three, I would focus on just getting comfortable with the experiences uh, first but then be open to taking more chances and risks. So just focus on what you, you're struggling with now, but then just sort of dabble in pushing um, that comfort zone so you are at least constantly progressing. Uh, advice number four is that I would make sure to, uh, to dress my best for a great first impression, but not forgetting about comfort. So try and look as good as you possibly can outfit wise, because you will certainly have people open to stopping and having a conversation with you, but also make sure that you are wearing comfortable shoes. So you aren't going to be wearing yourself out or injuring yourself. So you're going to have to cut your session short or just not do any approaching for a while whilst you end up letting yourself heal. And uh, point number five is always aim, if you can, to just try and end a practice session on a high. If you're a beginner, it, I think, do I do generally believe it's like the best thing that you can possibly do because you will just feel so good about doing the whole experience and um, it will make it even more justifiable for you to wanting to come out and do the whole thing again. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this video. If you can leave a comment in the uh, description leave a comment in the description below. No, leave uh, a comment below the description. And I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this video. And maybe if there's any other things that you would advise yourself, if you were to time travel back and give yourself advice from the very start as well. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you can like and subscribe to the video, because it certainly helps me out. It certainly allows me to grow and reach out to more men and help them with their their anxiety and their confidence. And if you are someone who is struggling with their dating, maybe you need to be held accountable with taking action, or perhaps maybe you've had certain things that have happened to you in the past that is giving you a lot of anxiety to move forward with your dating, then have a look in the description where I do offer coaching in both life coaching and integral eye movement therapy to help you to overcome these things too. But other than that, I've been that dating anxiety guy and uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos coming from me.